俺はこれでお前を勝ち取ったお前の戦場も死も全て俺のものだ俺の手の中から出ていきたいと言うならあの時と同じ剣で自分をもぎ取っていけ笑ってじゃあなってわけにはいかねえのかそうか For people, it is a difficult task to find at least one good friend. A friend with which the connection and trust is so developed that it is hard for others to separate you from one another. Have you ever thought of Guts without Griffith? Or of Naruto without Sasuke? There are duels in anime and manga as in life that are clearly memorable, but especially hard to form. The two souls of two people must meet and properly greet each other, find out if they truly have affinity. From a certain point on, those two start to melt into one another and form one whole. Guts and Griffith, Griffith and Guts. The maintenance of such deepened relations is furthermore a tedious goal, but all in all, It is worth it in the long and unpleasant span of the human life. Now imagine that the one dear friend that you had is careless and disloyal towards your emotions and your relationship. Here, everyone must be cautious of taking such a foolish step, lest you want to ruin your friendship, which you worked so hard for. Everyone is different, and you must and will develop an understanding of the character of your friends. Some are more jealous than others, some more competitive, and some are more possessive. Griffith counts to the aforementioned. You need to understand that people, however brilliant and unreachable they might outwardly seem, are humans. Who have grown a certain way from child to adult. And the child does not disappear, it just learns to cope with difficulties. Griffith was poor as a child, quiet but ambitious, with ragged clothes but attractive and charismatic. This child later began leading a band of mercenaries in order to reach an ultimate goal. Though the hunger for intimacy through a friendship didn't subside but intensified, he was often misunderstood, put all too often on a pedestal, portrayed as a perfect being. While true that Griffith is partially responsible for this kind of treatment through him being exceptionally eloquent, quiet, and intelligent, he didn't quite close himself off from others. Yes, he was admired and praised around the campfire. Did anyone ever really ask him, though, what he is thinking and how he is faring on? There was this presupposition that he knows all, achieves all. Having so much faith and trust in him, the mercenaries were dreaming of what shall come next after the following victory by the band of the hawk, personally for themselves. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, though the head of the snake is the motor. Rarely did anybody lead a group of people to success and did it alone, in solitude from others. Griffith was fascinated by Guts. Finding such a quantity of a likeness between his character and Guts's, both introverted, tough in battle, Deep thinkers and relentless in a pursuit of something. Griffith was for once understood. Guts was not intimidated by him. Rather, with time, they understood that they are quite similar. The problem is that Guts misvalued the weight of his actions. He wanted to further their bond by becoming closer to Griffith. By overhearing Griffith's speech, About an equal with a dream, Guts's inner child thought, 
My friend wants to be close to somebody like him. And I myself quite like that idea of having a dream and a purpose. Yes, but did God even discuss it with Griffith? True, that grown men needn't ask each other's permission for anything, but on a deeper level, childlike level, was it true? Griffith's dream before awakening the eclipse was one where he finally lives a quiet life with Casca. It was an extreme alternative to his reality which Griffith possibly could have had lurking in his head. It is supposed from psychoanalysts and dream analysts such as Carl Jung that what we dream is an internal message from the unconscious. The appearing characters are not the people that we know in waking life but rather a part of our personality. The question is if Mira meant it so. Either way, in Griffith's dream his son was named Guts. The father figure of Griffith in this instance represented his totalitarian and protective character. It symbolized order. Guts, his son, on the other hand, was the playful, childlike character in Griffith. It was named after Guts because Guts in real life was the only source of play and fun, the only source of a friendship. It could be assumed that the obsessive and totalitarian side of Griffith mostly controlled the body, as in his dream he saw everything through himself as the father figure in first person perspective, and for the reader, third person. The Griffith ego and the father figure had become one. And Guts was there as a son, but near the house, the control of the father. From this scene about Griffith's dream, it becomes clearer that Guts held a special place in his heart. But Griffith couldn't let him go. On the other side, Guts also felt a deep connection to Griffith, but he couldn't communicate properly couldn't express his feelings, and that for whatever reason. The main problem being that he left suddenly, without a notice, without an explicit goodbye. Instead, Griffith had to be called over to stop the friend that was leaving. Griffith was about to be left alone again, in his leadership position of cold solitude. Leaving someone without saying anything is a betrayal in and of itself, betrayal of integrity and trust, failure of character, because something has to be wrong with you for your friend to leave you suddenly. Again, it was just miscommunication from Guts's side. He saw it as an opportunity to better himself and thus further the friendship with Griffith by reaching a friendship of virtue. Griffith was not pleased. His playful counterpart was about to leave, and Griffith's paternal, oppressive character was not about to accept that. That's why he tried to impose his power on Guts once again, but this time failed. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor.